Recent lawsuit is the latest move in a nearly two-year battle for one Sun Prairie family. Yeah, it started with a new development that is now the new home to a business destroyed in a 2018 gas explosion. But the family living next door says the way it was built has turned into a nightmare. It's a story you'll only see here on NBC 15. When a gas line exploded in Sun Prairie five years ago, it took the glass nickel with it. So when it reopened in a new location downtown, it made many people happy it had new life. We completely empathize with that. The Thomases were among them. We were in support of this project from the beginning because of the explosion. Kayla and Jeff Thomas, who've lived in their home since 2007, liked the idea of new development for the city, even if it was right next door. But what they didn't know is that that development, they say, would rob them of feeling peace at home. From the experience of the installation to where we are now, it's really been a living nightmare. The nightmare is noise, a near constant hum, just feet from their home. It was running yeah. all the time. It was very invasive. We actively avoided going outside. The original plans for the restaurant with apartments above it show two smaller air conditioning units. What was eventually installed was a much bigger and louder industrial HVAC unit. But this is like having a lawnmower running right next to our home all day, all night, on a constant, you know, and we just have no reprieve. The Thomases wanted the unit moved, or at the very least, a sound barrier put in. They gave NBC 15 Investigates email after email, starting in 2021, reaching out to the owner for a solution. When they say that didn't work, they tried the community development director, building inspector, even their alder person. Everywhere they turned, roadblocks and a string of apologies from city officials. You know, throughout this whole time, they've been telling us, you know, we're sorry, we know that this is a frustration, we want a resolution. That's what yeah. everyone said. Mm -hmm. And the building owner said he's committed to a resolution, he's committed to solving the problem. Multiple times. Mm -hmm. And it's a year and a half later. And the sound just kept going. So they started doing their own research to see if that HVAC feed from their home was legal. They say the first thing they found out was that it wasn't supposed to be there. Because it was supposed to go on the roof. All the plans were for it to put on the roof. But between the architect not planning properly and them ordering too big of a unit, um, it was decided to put it on the side. Because there's so little room on the Thomas's side of the building, it's right on their property line. The Thomases wanted to show just how loud it was, so they took their own readings, more than a dozen, from August of 2022 until July of this year. Like those 90 degree, like humid days, we were catching readings at like 76, 77 really? decibels. Normally for something like this, residential sound limits is around 60 decibels. The unit would have to be several feet back. So why is it right on the property line, much higher than 60? The Thomases were shocked to find out their home is zoned commercial. Even though our house was built in the 1800s and has only ever been a home, has never been a, anything other than a residential property. A long time ago, this property along Main Street was strip zone commercial. Uh, and so we have plenty of places in town where we have residential uses that are zoned commercial. That means, according to city code, it's perfectly legal to put the HVAC right on the property line and let it run up to 70 decibels. But remember, the Thomas's readings were much higher. In fact, court filings show test after test all over 70. But those tests were done by the Thomases. And when the city came out to test on their own, the result? Do you remember what the reading was when you came out? It was right around the limit, so 70 decibels or just under. Community Development Director Scott Kugler says what that means is there's really nothing the city can do. No, until we have a, a inspection where we, sh we find something that's not in compliance, we really have no power to, to make the owner do anything. Eventually, people have to push. I visited the Thomases in July when they hired a third party to take readings on their own. Over here, we're, we're basically at 75 decibels. To live with 75, that is uh, substantial. That's in line with what the Thomases were finding, too. So why is it so different from the city? I think it comes down to how the readings are taken, right? So the, the ordinance isn't... Um, precisely clear as to how to do it, but it provides some guidance as to where the readings should take place. And I think whether you're holding the unit above the fence, um, below the fence, um, I, I think that could affect the readings. That was back in July. I revisited them last week. Unfortunately, the same. So nothing has changed. There. So they decided their only option was something they didn't want to do, a lawsuit. At this point, we have done everything in our power to try to come to a amicable solution. So. Um, unfortunately, this is not the direction that we wanted to be at. We'd like to resolve this before we got to this point, but that we felt that that was our only option.
They say all they want is the noise gone, whether it's the unit moved or a barrier put up. Their hope is that because of their struggle, the city will change how it handles these situations moving forward. It's an opportunity to shed some light on a story like this to make sure, like she said, this doesn't happen to somebody else because we just know that there's other projects happening all over town in some prairie. Now, I did reach out to the owner of the Glass Nickel. I got his lawyer in contact with me. They've decided not to comment on the story at this time, and I, I do want to note that's not uncommon when a lawsuit is filed. Yeah, sure. But mm -hmm. what I want to know, and what I'm sure a lot of people are wondering, why won't the owner just move it? It's a big question. In part, it's because of the cost. Mm -hmm. Whether you move it after it's been installed or even you put a barrier up, it is going to cost money. In fact, a social media post from the owner says in part that they have cost overruns because of the pandemic. He goes on to say, quote, I am not a rich man. The city says that the owner told them the same thing as they've been trying to work through this process.